in celebrating the life of our dear sister, Michelle Farrell. So can we all stand, please? Very slowly. I am the resurrection and the life. and the life said the Lord he that believeth in me though he die yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we carry nothing out the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away blessed be the name of the Lord whether we live we live unto the Lord or whether we die we die unto the Lord whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Because I live, ye shall live also. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to do honor and pay our respects to Michelle Farrell, who has died. Her passing away affects us how short is our existence and the frailty of our mortal being. We are here to give her her last rites in thanking Almighty God for her life and for even our continuing lives. We are here to listen to some of the great words of the Christian faith and to renew our trust in God and the hope brought through His Son, Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection this moment. But in full trust and hope for a better life in eternity, let us praise God with joyful hearts today. As I declare, as I declare the service officially opened. Rock of ages, let for let me hide myself in thee. Let me hide myself. Let the water and the blood, let the water run. From the wounded side it flowed, from the wounded side, be of sin the double cure, be of sin. And me, save us and make me pure, not the labor of my hands, not the labor. Thy laws, could my seal no respite, no, could my zeal no respite, could my tears forever flow, could my tears forever all for sin could not atone. All for sin could not atone. Thou must save and us alone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord this morning. We give all the glory. And to say the Apostle's Creed, I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, he ascended into heaven. From then he shall come to judge. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection. Lord, have mercy upon us. When I suffer.
and we loved her too. But now we find our love painful because she has been taken away from us. For a moment we cannot follow, but we yield unto you with a blessed hope of your promise of salvation. Thy mighty power that is raised up our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, strengthen us now by thy Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Comfort us to mourn and give unto us grace in the presence of death to worship thee for the sure hope of eternal life and be unable to put our whole trust in thy goodness and thy mercy. Bless us to hear the words of thy scriptures that we may have hope and be lifted up in thy presence. Fill us with joy and peace, and comfort us and keep us. I, I want to live with you.
Praise God. If you could only see the beauty of the Spirit, we will rejoice in it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God, man. I want us to sing today. Mm -hmm. We want us to sing. I want you to send her home happy. Praise God. That that spirit that is just still resting with us. Uh -huh. Could hear some singing. Could hear some rejoicing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Could hear that we can't hear her singing. But I know. Praise God. She will rejoice with them. Touch my finger with the whole hand, with the whole hand.
afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to first extend my heartfelt gratitude to all who attended today to celebrate the life of Michelle Juliet Farrell, a.k.a. Mimi. Please indulge me in sharing a story of the life of Mimi, a story mixed with a little history, a little humor, and lots and lots and lots of love. Michelle was born on February 6, 1971, to parents Angela Farrell, a.k.a. Homan, and Felix Farrell, a.k.a. Figgy. Michelle was the only child of Homan and first grandchild of Homan's mother. Michelle grew up in Kandahar, surrounded by love from her parents, grandmother, and right around the corner, her Aunt Babsy and cousins Alicia and Errol. Michelle's circle of love also consisted of her second dad, Winston Ashton, and her brother, Ian Charles, and sister, Susan Charles. Growing up in Kandahar, Michelle and her sibling got into trouble together from one, running away to go to Bluestone, go over hole, and floodgate rivers to Tiffin, right next door, Janet Aquarium Fish, to Pelton, Mary Bontan, Jepness on the mango tree and get in sting. Michelle's grandmother lived in the U.S. and would buy clothes for her grandchildren, Michelle, Alicia, and Errol. Nobody could tell them three little rascals that they were not dressed fresh to death. Even when they were in the most ridiculous of get-ups, they thought they were the freshest dressed little things on planet Earth. One year, Christiana came down from New York and brought them Michael Jackson outfits, complete with studded, studded leather jackets, leather skirt, leather pants, and boots. Yes! You can believe the sight when the three of them dress up in full gear to go to Five Rivers Junior Sec Bazaar, <laughs> strutting in the hot sun to walk from Kandahar all the way to the school party. On the way there, one adult remarked while laughing, Ooh, we, all, all you're missing is all your horse and saddle. <laughs> Michelle, Errol, and I didn't care a damn because we knew we were dressed to kill and nobody wanted nothing with me. Michelle went to Kandahar TIA for her primary school education and then on to serve all for secondary education. Michelle later found her passion as a caregiver and went on to work as a nurse's aide, caring for ill and aged patients. Michelle loved her job and her patients loved her gentle touch, caring heart, and patient mind. Michelle worked at several institutions until owning and efficiently running her own nursing home, Farrell's Care in Hand. Michelle gave birth to her firstborn, Nikisha. Michelle loved being a mom, and soon after, Nikisha was followed by Afisha, Jamil, and Kern. Michelle was the true definition of a tiger mom and many mothers to provide for her kids. She fiercely protected them and strived to ensure they would want for nothing. Her labor did not go in vain. Michelle effortlessly switched from the mom role to the doting grandmother role when her grand Mimi showered her grandkids with affection and kept smiles on their faces. She was often known to come home with her bag and her bags were always filled with treats and toys for her grandchildren. And she gave the same love, caring and giving extended to her spiritual home, St. Anthony's Spiritual Baptist Church, where she was lovingly referred to as matron. Michelle religiously cleaned the church. That was her spot right there where Perry sat in. She religiously cleaned the church, following him all around to pilgrimages in every corner of Trinidad and Tobago. She was an avid supporter of her spiritual brothers and sisters in any capacity, whether it meant cooking for their thanksgivings, 
serving as a nurse for their baptisms and washings, always available to assist and lend support for anniversaries, weddings, and birthdays. She was also a confidant to many. You could tell her anything and it go in nowhere. Michelle had beautiful relationships with all who crossed her paths. Many would say she was pure love. While she maintained respectful relationships with the fathers of her children, her partner in crime until her passing was Perry Gilbert. Perry and Michelle started dating while they were in their 20s and they shared a son, Kern. Through trials and tribulations, wins and losses, laughter and sorrow, sickness and health, Michelle and Perry were there for each other for the next 25 plus years until her passing. Michelle and her common-law husband, Perry, were Bonnie and Clyde for each other. Thank you for loving Michelle the way you did. Michelle got a diagnosis of stage four breast cancer a few days before celebrating her 50th birthday last year. True to form, her first instinct was to shelter her kids and the one she loved. She celebrated her birthday party with her family and close friends while shielding them from the devastating news. About a week after the party, she called a family meeting and calmly informed her kids and loved ones of her cancer diagnosis. Michelle was never one to hold a pity party for herself, and I'm sure many of you didn't know what she was going through. She held a brave face through it all. Though being treated with chemotherapy and various medications, Michelle's main therapeutic was prayer. In the mornings, I remember dad just came back from the US, they would pray every morning, and Del would be praying with her at night. Her main therapy was prayer. Michelle fought her illness with grace, strength, and faith. She was a loving daughter, sister, mother, cousin, and grandmother, niece, and friend. Pure love. It is impossible to not feel immense sorrow for losing such a love Bell will truly be missed. Though she left behind a comforted knowing that the love she gave and her life of service to others guaranteed her a spot in heaven. To Michelle, 23. We were busy planning how not to bring attention to your ample and well-endowed derriere. Hello, Elia, big, beautiful butt. A butt that always brought attention and made many heads turn. Damn, I will have to keep, my, keep that promise for the both of us by squeezing my old tail in some crazy costume by myself. Without you, dear, please, while you continue to share your love among the angels, your loving cousin, and ride or die, Alicia. Expressions that remind us of the of a life lived, you know, of someone who was the type that would reach out to others, someone that touched humanity, someone that cared, someone that showed love, someone that was a family person, and yet she served God in this church in a mighty way. You heard the words of development in this church. She was there to support them. Praise God. Praise God. Hmm? Things like these, you're going over to reward. God, God, they'll forget these things. Here. Praise the Lord. Praise these God. things are recorded. That's why the writer said, I'm praising my Savior all the In that story, there was a very important event in that story. She worked for God. Praise the Lord. And in her story is a very important registration that she was baptized. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Make sure that when you live in this world, that's in your story. That you have received the Lord Jesus Christ in baptism. Otherwise, such shall be your
Worship. Praise the Lord. At this time, I want to, because you know, in times like these, the Michelle doesn't belong to me, she belongs to all of you. Praise God. She belongs to all of you. And it is the last opportunity sometimes when to the person. Right? It is now I want to just give those who would like to just share and experience their love, even to come for the family, to say a few words and so on. I want to leave the floor open now for anyone who would like to come and pay a tribute to Michelle. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everybody. As I lay me down, heaven hear me now. I get my own. Winter storms have come. And darken my sun After all that I've been through Who on earth can I turn to? I look to you I look to you After all my strength is gone in you I can be strong, I look to you, I look to you. And the melodies are gone, in you I hear a song, I look to you. How to lose my breath There's no more fighting left Sinking to rise no more Searching for that open door And every road that I've taken It led to my regret And I don't know if I'm gonna make it Nothing to do but lift my head. I look to you. I look to you. Yeah. And when all my strength is gone, and you are hear a song, I look to you. I look to you. And when melodies are gone, and you are hear a song, I look to you. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, you know, for coming and supporting us in our time of moon. Um, I didn't plan to say anything because everyone thought that I would be the one painting and <laughs> stuff. I'm really shocking myself. Um, but you know, I'll say something quick on the spot. So much I can say about my mother. So much. Um, mommy, loving, caring to each and every one, but especially her kids. So this day we never found out who was her favorite. We always asked, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite? And you know, she would individually treat each one of us as her favorite. So you know, after recently we asked her, she said, no, no, it's my favorite. No, no, it's my favorite, right? I, it's my favorite. So, um, mommy, <laughs> why can't I say about mommy? I can say a lot. Mommy wasn't only my mother, she was also my best friend, being her first and having me at a very young age, you know, I grew with her. 
I was able to confide in her into a lot of stuff. I was able to go to her. And you know, she never picked side in any situation. She always said, Nikisha, you ass wrong. Nikisha, you are wrong, you are wrong. You know, if I'm right, I'm right. She was never. She accepted my husband. And then I thought that she loved him more than she did, you know, love me. That is her son. I'm showing. Oh. Go hard time with us, was short. I, I, I got comfort in knowing that she's in no more pain. She fought. She fought. She fought through a lot of pain. A lot, a lot of pain. I tell you though, her last word being say, saying, y'all, I can't take this pain no more. And for mommy to say that, you know, she, yeah, she was, she, I'm mean, thankful to know that she, Came home and she was able to rest. She died sleeping peacefully. You know, she was able to be surrounded with her loved ones the night before. So, you know, I get comfort in that. Um, I thank you. I thank her. I thank I know that she knows I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I loved her. All her kids. All her kids. You know, and for the teaching that she brought to us. The cooking, I say, you know. <laughs> Afisha, I'm going to miss that cooking, but Afisha. Thank you. Mommy, we love you. Good afternoon to everybody. Thanks everyone for coming to my sister funeral. It's hard, very hard to accept. God knows best. You know, we always there for one another. Always. When it's her Thanksgiving, I dare cooking by the place, you know, trying to get things together and all them things. Time to clean the church. She says, Susan, come down there, girl. So girl, I come and girl, come down, help me clean the church. I went in because I want to learn. So I come down and I help and I clean the church. She tell me what to do to do. When she cannot make it, I will come. Church now, girl. Girl, I ain't feeling girl, what happened to you? Come and go to church. Get ready, I come down and meet her. We come. Sometime I might come. She ain't come. She am home. She will come and meet me. We there. Come and meet me. With father. Come and meet me. And so we go in. You know? Go on lime sometime. Come down, cook. Having some little bit was a love with Michelle. No matter what it is, she always there to help somebody. Then I help in hand. You know, and that is what I will miss about her. You know, she gave her life to God. She never gave up. Already last day, she still wasn't giving up. She was fight, still will stay home, and I will pray for her. You know, and I pray and ask him God to strengthen her and keep her, that she could live more years, that we could continue, you know, with one another, coming to church and having a good time and all them things. There's no more. My last days, I went in the hospital, can't leave me like this. What's going on with you? Open your eyes. She just shaking the foot. And the only time she opened her eye was the next day when her daughter, Fisher, went to visit her. She opened my eyes. Say, thank you, Jesus. We still had hope that everything going to be good. You know? But God knows best. He really knows best. But we will miss her. Dearly, we will miss her. I will miss her a lot. I will miss her a lot. Because I have no way I could call. And call and talk. Michelle, girl, what's going on? She will call. Susan, what are you cooking today? Whatever you cook, bring it bring down some for me sometime. It's a condition I don't want to tell her what I'm cooking because I don't want her to eat that. You know? So I will say, girl, I ain't doing, I ain't doing anything. But it hurts in my heart because I can't bring it far because that I don't want it to humble her sickness so 
I would say no girl. Are there things I would do? Send down for her. You know? That is what I will mess about her. Calling Nigerian Queen and her friend here. <laughs> was one too. There's one also. And I would say, Micha girl, what and what? And she would call and tell me. So we go in. But I hope, you know, everybody know and see. Thank you all for coming and have a blessed day. Well done, everyone. I, I believe my life has been blessed as a result of Sister Michelle. I didn't know anything about this feat, nothing about the spiritual Baptist feat. And I met Sister Michelle and she invited me to her Thanksgiving. And since then, I will say that um, I learned a lot. I will say that also in, a, in some ways I am very grateful to her and her family for you know, the care she showed and the concern she showed because I mean many of us are part of a, a, a religion but we might not really want to share it to that extent and we might not invite people in our homes. She, she barely knew me, you know, and she invited me to the Thanksgiving and you know, I, it, there's no words to describe the gratitude and the appreciation, you know, that I hold for the sister. You know, she was always an inspiration as a matron, you know, a very down-to-earth person, very jovial, you know, and she, she truly has blessed my life, and I'm sure she has blessed all of your lives as well, you know, so... I just want to say to the family, you know, my condolences and be strong and, you know, um, keep on keeping on, you know, and hold on to Jesus. That is the prayer of my heart. You want? I said, I said, boy, you know, I didn't, uh, so much to say about Miss Michelle. You know, Miss Michelle cheated me. I see son. And he said to them, well, it's my sister, you know, and thing. First, the love that this woman showed to me is, is, is beyond. This lady here, she was more than just a mother, you know, to me. She was like a real friend, a real comforter. I'm a, I'm a girl. You understand? It had, when I now started to court Nikki, I was living down the road, and I brought home Nikki and I, and Nikki and I stayed up watching some movie or something like that and I sit down on the couch and then Miss Michelle called Nikki I don't know what she asked Nikki and Nikki come back so I said I looking to leave Michelle come she said where are you going I said I'm going down the road she know she said I don't talk to Nikki and let Nikki know what to do make up her bed and thing and pass sheet for me to lie down with and thing I said what's going on there boy I said, just, <laughs> I didn't even want to touch Nikki. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even want to touch Nikki, kiss Nikki, nothing that night on the I just saying, but what? <laughs> I said, what? what? Early in the morning, he don't knock. Um, get up and go and see about something for the boy to eat for me, please. Get up and thing and. I said, wait, boy. I said, this woman, this woman opened everything. She door, she had, she home to me and she she told me when Nikki and I got married, one of the things what she said was, she said, Andel, don't call me Michelle. <laughs> I'll be at very laugh of that and thing. And you know, she was a woman, she, she would have come so and just do what she blessed me. She said, Real bless me. She said, Just come this year. Miss Michelle, she said, Like to see me happy. She said, Like to see we in love. She said, Like to see the togetherness. She said, Like to see the. I wouldn't already miss her, but you know, watching from. Perry, Kern, Zari, Fisher, Sherwin, Nikki, everybody, she living in each and every one of them. So I could glance and say, hey boy, you know, Michelle would I do this. Or, hey, Michelle, within the last times there, she always used to tell me, she said, and they don't dry up, you know. I said, don't dry up. She said, don't get dry on me, you know, don't get dry. She said, keep that little fire within your spirit, your life burning. And she probably see something within me that I didn't even and talk and go down and talk and thing. And it was nice, it was nice. You understand? I can't say nothing bad about this lady, boy. By being real with her. This woman, she, she lived for Christ. 
you know everybody pathway to christ different and you know we cannot judge nobody at their pathway to christ and i know she was on that walk to christ and in some time in jesus name good to everyone and you know brothers and sisters in christ everybody well the amount i have i can't see i made that on my own right I have my own mother's son. I will live with my mother. Let me die when I know Smith Michelle. I live with my mother and just sisters and love and tell and thing, right? There's no way how I end up in the village and then how I saw Michelle. Right? I just say, I just get up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been honest, I've been honest. It's so long I will make it short, right? Yeah. So I just get up. I'm on the step. Who is this tall thing? Who is this tall thing? Well, she had a real friend. She had a friend they called Maria. A short one, one as she friend. I like Maria staying at the time because no more Maria companion. He called my time to stay in the house, let the police go. So I get up in the morning. I say, hey, tallest, tallest. Okay. I say, okay. I come back in the house, everybody. I bet you. End up with that lady. She has to change the church and father. No break up. And she never call. I said, yes, I said, I said, told us about mother. They say, yes, I said, well, like a mom in it. And I went by the real of her life to Michelle Mums. Right? Because Michelle never had time to be home. Me and Miss Oman sat down, we talk. Sometimes Michelle doesn't know I'm home by she. Don't know me tell Michelle I like she yet. I ain't get a chance to say. <laughs> Mommy, what is fella doing, you know, Miss Oman? I like the habit she had. We sat down, we drink, we smoke. She got play, she play with. Come out, she cuss everybody in the yard. And she says, son, you're going home this hour? Just like what Azandel said. And she looked at her bedroom there. I said, I, I said, I, did. I said, Miss Oman, I'm a very hasty animal person, you know. A different. And she said, go and lie there. When I come, she said, put more off she bed. <laughs> no man can sleep on this bed. Never yet. You see no love loss? Go down with my mom. I said, mom's. Just need to go miss me, you know, because I felt like I have a vision. Now, it didn't happen yet, but I know that is the only person what she do for me. Now, even that my mother could have changed my life, before how Michelle changed my life. Michelle made me come to Christ. She was a, a, a bigger follower than me, right? I still was worthless. But it's she that bring me to know God, up to now I still can't pray. But I was following, but I was real hard. Hard head, hard head, hard head. Only Michelle the only person. I used to live with her. And I stand up with she. She makes me be a father. I have two sons I have. The first one, after I'm get done. And people, I said, I can't say much, right? But she's everything to me. A mother, a wife, sister, grandmother, any stranger. Thank you very much, right? A pleasant morning to Pastor Reed, Prophet Enos, and my two brothers here, yeah, the mother, all co workers in the vineyard of Christ, the Farrell family, the in laws, the grandchildren, everybody. Okay, well, if you all don't know Amanda's mom, oh, sorry, right, Amanda's mom, and I got to know Miss Michelle through Andel. And you know, what they're really saying about it is really true. She was always jovial. She was very loving. And from the time we meet, we just click and she just take me in, you know. It had, I have at home, them that's called me Panchita. She used to call me, you know. She used to be calling me Panchita, Panchita. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, friends from ever since. And she was really, she was really, really loving. And you know, she never showed me any, any bad face or anything. I know, and my son always speak good about her. We build that relationship with each other, myself and her. And I, I used to send her, you know, little prayers, you know, when she was able to read it. And even in her life, you know, God, you are, you are in charge. You know, and I know that, you know, you know, God is such a good God that, you know, he wouldn't leave us, you know, he wouldn't leave us to suffer. So, you know, her time has reached and she left a good legacy. She had that love for God and she encouraged others in the Lord. 
So, you know, today I just want to tell the family, you know, to continue to have that love for God and to serve God in the beauty of holiness. Because, you know, he said, Father and Mother will forsake you, but, you know, he will never forsake you. So I just want to tell you to hold on to the man Christ Jesus. You know, you all continue to keep that holy is how you could conquer these things. It's through prayer. And, you know, continue to keep in that prayer. Continue to keep in that oneness. And as Andrew said, you know, they used to pray a certain time every, every night. Continue that pattern with each other. You know, so that you all can go stronger and build a better relationship in Christ. In no other name, but in Jesus' name. In trouble and in joy. Praises of my God shall sing. My God shall sing. My heart and tongue employ. Love of my soul. Oh. consciousness to guide us and to lead us in the way that we would want us to go or even to warn us and awaken us that there is more ahead of us than is behind that is ahead of you than is behind you but it's how you make your way there praise God
Yeah, beginning. <clears throat> Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it will, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? He said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I will rest at the sixth verse of a portion containing 31 verses. Glory be to the Father.
celebration we come and we look nice and everything and then we go on and we say oh boy we put away Michelle Michelle is gone and and that's it what is the message that we are leaving with here today that must make us better people as we chart this journey alive I want to stay within the foundation the foundation tells us, let not your heart be troubled. Not so? Yes, sir. What he's saying here is, don't worry. All this and grief and things, stop that. God hate that. He said, weep not for the happy dead. Providing, of course, it is a happy dead. We'll come to that. 
I want you all to listen carefully this evening. Providing problems. Why we worry? We worry at, at the debt for several different reasons. Not every one of us here have the same reason for worrying. As we hear this evening, we hear Michelle was loving, was kind. I can attest to that. She, I, I, I get to know her because she's family to my wife. She and her mother, which are cousins, and I know Michelle whole life. And what has been said this evening is a fact. We all have little um, ups and downs and problems. Who don't have? But the basic thing is what has been said here today, and it is a fact. She has love. She grow with love. We'll have a grief because of the relationship we had with her. Because she's now no Michelle again, as some say, and say, girl, what are you cooking today? We cannot go to Michelle and say, girl, let us go to and so place. Let us run and have that company and that joy to share. I so will miss the nuts. <laughs> because, and, and the crew also were missing her. Or lack of relationship. Some of us had lost the opportunity to treat Michelle as she deserved. Many times, Many times we come to the death and come for Michelle that we neglected to do. So we are grieving because we had an opportunity. I hate her. I um, envy her. I, 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 I was vexed with she and I forgive her. And this kind of thing. But have you gone all after to do good back to them? No, I don't want to have no dealings with them. But you help you. I don't want to do this for them because she didn't do me like her. How come you help you? And it is a clean hand and a pure heart I will not despise. I don't want to go too deep into a pure heart. Much we can talk on that. The other aspect is um, the other aspect is we are not sure where Michelle is. We believe, based on circumstances, we all believe where Michelle should be. But none of us see her there. And therefore, we worry as to whether she made the mark. These are the things that cause us to worry. But it here, hear my God. Don't worry. Because there's nothing you can do about it now. There's no repentance in the grave. So whether you mourn, you groan, you do whatever you do, it cannot do anything for Michelle, but make sure you do for yourself. So you can make your calling and your election sure. He said, in my father's house, that God is outside of space and time. We are in space and time. So that he's not talking about an earthly home. 
He's talking about a spiritual home. And if we go to the book of 1 Corinthians 15, Paul explains this. Paul says, when we die in a moment, we are changed. But we are not all transformed. It is so carnal and it is raised spiritual. And this, this earth is not the plane for spiritual beings. It is for the flesh, carnal beings. And therefore we know that the place that he has gone to prepare for us is in the spiritual realm. And that, is, that realm is eternal. There is no limit. There is Now, he may, many times we miss that word. You know, sometimes you, you, every funeral you go to, every funeral you go to, hear what you hear. Well, we know that he is in a better place. Every funeral, you hear the pastor. Well, we know that the person, the person never come to church. They never baptize. They, they, they're always in trouble. All kind of better place. And cry. And to, to bring that into, I think it's 16, 30, 31, or somewhere wrong there. Paul gave a parable. To give understanding to when we depart this earth. Children, listen, you know. You all have an opportunity to make all the life right. There were two characters being wicked and evil. Lazarus walking with God. Two characters. They both died. They both died. And hear what the scripture is saying here. David raised up his eyes and look in Abraham's bosom. He been in torment. Hear what the scripture is saying, you know. He been in torment. See Abraham afar off, not near where he can jump across. Afar off in, in Abraham's bosom. Well, we know today it is a parable, and Lazarus will not be in any Abraham's bosom. What he was saying is the time will come that you all, will. and when the time comes, you will see me in my father's bosom. He used um, Lazarus to indicate the risen Christ and he used Abraham to signify the father. He couldn't say, if you're in your semen, my father was on the stone him. So he used the metaphor. You see Lazarus into Abraham's bosom. And here, here Lazarus, could you hear um, thy beat? Could you in torment? Could you send Lazarus to give me a sip of water? The answer is he cannot come to you, nor you to him. Because between you there's a gulf. So don't go with the feeling that everybody living here going the same place. The Bible tells you Christ stood one day and tell the congregation there are some of you here will not see death until my coming. He was not talking about physical death. He was talking about the grave experience for some will die and some will fall asleep. Those who are in Christ will fall asleep. And those who are not in Christ will experience death. But all bodies, all of us, 
will have to depart this world one day. For the wages of sin is death. That law can't change. We have an opportunity through baptism. We have an opportunity through Christ to save us that, that spiritual death by the tomb. Let me warn you all here. See ye the kingdom of God and its righteousness. That is what we have to do. And seek him when we could find him. Some of us waiting until we are deathbed. And you know what is, is hideous about it? Sometimes they come, you, you never went to church, you don't even know about God. But they come now and they start to talk to you about God five days before you're dead. And you I, I accept God now. And so on. And they start to say, you know, he's going to heaven, you know, because he just accepted Christ before. When you are young and God could use you for his purpose, then is when you're supposed to start seeking God. When you already had all the time in the world, some of us say we're young now. And when I get older, I'm going to start to seek, I'm going to start to seek the Lord. Stop that. Seek it now. There's no more beautiful life that you can enjoy, but in the life of Christ, it is pure, it is clean. Not polluted. No wait until your whole body, your whole life become corrupt, and then you're running to the altar to beg for forgiveness. Take it now. You young people, take it now. And God is able God is able to open doors in your life that you, by all your might and power, cannot open. Life because nothing happening. But God is able. When he went to the lake Gennesaret, he showed them that he's a provider. So we know of the spiritual house. But um, all right, time is moving. I want to deal in, in a sense specifically in this situation. And I want to warn the family. This house as I say, one of the, the problems is in, 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 in that is what we leave behind. What is the circumstances of what we are leaving behind? The children, the grandchildren, and all of that. Will it be a cohesive bond or will it shatter because the spirit has fallen to the house it's destroyed. The strength of her house. They were standing on that main pillar. The pillar is broken. Could the others keep the house from falling and disintegrating? Most of the time that there are deaths and the parents leave, then you know who the children really are. When you see the bitterness, the strife, the fight, and the foolishness that emanates after that person is dead, you wonder where the love goes. All the love, we will, we will have an opportunity we will have that opportunity. Today is the ceremony and we all together. From tomorrow and thereafter will be the test of whether what Michelle did, the anatomy, they didn't make it. 
part of their life to carry on with where she left off. May God be with them. And I hope to God, they are big men and women. I hope to God. We have to face the reality. Whether we will be one or whether we will be scattered like sheep begging you all. May God bless you all this evening. May God, Michelle was a wonderful one. I couldn't, as soon as I raised to go somewhere in the church, she loved God with a passion. It's in the place and in a better place. I could say that because of the life she lived. She got her not working or sick. Michelle is coming to church. So, look, look, we, we had morning service and Father, I feel we could go somewhere, you know. And it's so fun to spend the day with Christ. This evening, may God bless you all. And I church with me, we will have plenty more conversation. But I hope to God that you mothers, you have bill when you die. You have to build it while you're alive. May God keep you all together today. And I do hope and trust the love you all have shown this evening by coming out in this, these numbers. That you will remember the family. And always call and say, how are you all going? Don't just turn your back now that Michelle gone. Hey, hey, how are you all going? Everything all right? Sometimes they may just need a little word of encouragement to the table of your heart. Yeah. Oh, Lord, my God. Let her But in all of us here, somebody's going to be next. Or bodies, because the way it's going these days. Yeah? It's going to be next. That is not the problem. As the minister was saying, what is the problem after that? What is going to matter? If I tell you, well, what you plan for the next five years, you say, well, I know so, so, so. And if you live the next 20 years, well, you know what I'm planning? I'm building my house. But the question I want to ask you today that you must be able to answer when this time comes is where are you going to be a thousand years from now? A hundred years, well, tell some older young might live old. So let me say two hundred years from now. Where are you going to be? And every day of your life, you have to answer that question because you're going to wake up one day and find that your ears are heaven. And there is a hell. You're going to wake up and find that out, you know. Mm -hmm. And what is going to matter? Michelle House and the road there, and the bed, and the whatever. Is any of that going with her? And not only that I'm going with her, for all what we feel, we ain't going neither. There's one walk we take alone. Mm -hmm. There's 
one walk. Nobody, nobody wants to share that. You don't want to share? Yep. But that is what we don't want to share that. But as sure as day follows night, it's going to come. Will I spend my eternity? Just think of that. And you've got to answer that question, not now. You've got to answer that from now. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Because who to whom you are servant of? Yes, shall you that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So God brings us to this place, not to cry. As I say, it's the, it's the funeral home that's buried dead. You know, buried dead, you ain't digging no hole and you ain't thinking, you know, it's them to all that. How oh, those are the things that are going to matter. Things are not going to matter when you die. Things. Watch your gold chain, you go in your money. Things are not going to matter. No matter how much you accumulate, sometimes you only store it up for somebody else to spend. And sometimes who you think you're leaving it for. It's not them. You hear what I'm telling you? Sometimes when you tell them to bury you, they bury you somewhere else. You hear know what I'm saying? So things are not going to get you where you are. It works. It is the love of God. It is the love of the fellow. You're going to give. That's one who's going to get you there. I tell people don't worry about things. You know, I be on worrying about trying to acquire things in my life. Do so. Eggs come in. What? The mud come in and eat and rust. Come in and decay and things there. Eh? The shoe that was new does get old, and the house that was staying had to paint it over, and the car run down. And I think about things always going. But what of your soul? Do you owe your soul? Do you owe? Do you owe your soul, your spirit, to go to somewhere? Pro spirit deserves to, to go. You don't have to do nothing. Go to hell. That one nice about hell. You ain't have to do nothing. But go to heaven. There's a walkway, there's a path that's set by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I pray today, brethren, that even in this funeral, we will do a check. Even in this funeral, we'll do a self-review. Even in this funeral, we'll come to our consciousness.
want you to release her. You, you hear what the minister talk about her and her life and so I want you to release her and let her go. Don't hold her back. Release her in love. Release her in thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Yeah? Release her and let her go on. You know, there's a story a man, his only daughter died and, and one night he was dreaming. And as he was dreaming, he saw his daughter walking with a lot of other little children. And every time when he saw her candle was out. And so in the dream, she said, Father, many times they light it back, but every time you cry, it outs my car. Praise the Lord. We want, I want you to release her in love. Mommy, thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. And we're going to let her go. Praise the Lord. I want you to let her go. She will take all the tears, all the grief. She will take it and she will go with it. Praise the Lord. And she will look back at you. I'll ask Reverend Mother to say a prayer over the family. And then we will let it go as we release from our hand. Yes? we letting that bird fly from that cage. We're going to release after the prayer in Jesus' name. How sweet the name of Jesus. Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the bright and the morning star, the fairest of 10,000, the rose of Sharon, and the lily of the valley. Father, this time on our blessed God, standing on behalf of your children, blessed God, standing, Father God, letting them know that you are the God of all comfort today, that you're going to comfort their heart, Holy Master. Father in high Jerusalem this evening, have thine own way into their lives, blessed God. I pray you take all their lives and let it be holy, Master. I pray you consecrate it, Lord, to the Lord. You take their moments and their days, Lord. Dear God, and you let them flow in ceaseless praise. Heavenly Father this evening, Lord, touch the heart, holy Master. Bind up the broken heart in this evening, blessed God. Take full control, blessed God, and let them know, Holy Master, that you are the God of their life today, Lord, and you are the God of their salvation, blessed God. Eternal and otherwise, God, look at them, blessed Jesus. Look at your children here below, blessed God. Cry and blessed Master, but I pray you dry the tears to their Lord. I pray you come for the hearts, blessed God. Our Lord God, let them know we permit joy for night, but joy will come in the morning. Our Lord God, today have thy own way to the Lord, blessed God. Speak to them in the heat of the day, Master. Speak to them in the stillness of the light. Ah, oh, blessed Jesus, have thy own way, blessed Father. Touch each and every one of them, Lord. Our Lord God is the stars, Lord. 
All the brothers, holy master. Look at the grandchildren, blessed God. Look at the husband, blessed God. Look at the father, holy master. Look at the nieces and nephews, Lord. Look at the aunts and uncles, blessed God. Her spiritual family, holy master. Touch them one by one, blessed God. Bring them to consciousness, blessed God. That at the feet of Jesus, every knee shall bow today. And every tongue shall confess today. You will dry their tears, holy master. And dry Draw them closer to you, blessed God. Help them, Father God, to seek you while you may be found, blessed God. I honor and magnify and glorify your name because you are worthy to be praised, dear God, and you are worthy to be held in counsel. In no other name but in Jesus' almighty name. In Jesus' almighty name. In Jesus' almighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Will you thank you, Matthew? With your whole church, we offer you our thanks and praise for all you have done for mankind through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You gave him to live and to die for us, and you have disclosed your gracious plan for the world and showed that your love has no limits. And by raising him up from the dead, you have a promise that those who trust in him will share in the life, and by his glorious resurrection, open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. For the assurance and hope of our faith, and for the saints whom you have received into your eternal joy, comfort. Deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn. Comfort them in all their affliction, and deal graciously with them. Uphold them by thy power, and guide them by thy spirit. They, they shall be rejoined with their loved one in your kingdom. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are about to we're going to shed these flowers and we're going, we're going to sing this. Thing. My shepherd will supply the rest of the church help us sing that. Praise the Lord. And we're going to release. My
Freunde.